Dear Knob Mouse, I think we need more of the blue monster on your videos. He is seriously very cool and great and everyone loves him. Please show us more of the monster. Yours sincerely, Mr. T-H-E Monster. Hello Mouses! Welcome to the revamped Knob Mouse show on a brand new channel. Why a new channel? Well, I got sick of waiting for Google to sort out all the problems that they caused with my AdSense account. So what I've done is I've taken all of my shows and I'm going to put them together on this channel and we're going to wait it out here instead. I've got some strange news for you today. Apparently the main technique we have for running survival mode in Minecraft actually comes to us from the Neolithic era. 12,000 years ago, a massive network of tunnels crisscrossed Europe underground, which let Stone Age people get around without having to deal with all of the massive creatures and deadly beasties that happened to be on the surface and it's really a manner that's not dissimilar from how the Viet Cong got around during the Vietnam War. Up to this point, I'd never actually considered living in a hole in the ground to be a natural instinct of the human race. But now it's turned up three different times, I'm starting to think that perhaps the reason that we came down from the trees in the first place is so that we could live among the roots. What's this got to do with Minecraft? Well, unless you're making epic towers of awesomeness that go right up into the sky and have huge roads that float in the air that crisscross the land between them, then you are probably digging tunnels under the ground in order to get around without being shot by skeletons every two minutes, which is the average lifespan of a Minecraft character, especially if I'm playing. Well, I say the average Minecraft player, but maybe that's not true. If YouTube is anything to go by, then what the average Minecraft player is doing is not actually playing Minecraft at all. What they're doing is building massive, massive structures of epic proportions and getting intricate circuitry working in them so they can make huge, massive, epic displays of complete time wasting and then putting them on YouTube so other people can see and go, wow, that's great, I've got to beat that. And then they produce even bigger epic structures with even bigger and more complex working parts in some kind of weird electronic arms race. Speaking of arms races, have you ever looked at a military parade and thought, this needs more nerds? If so, your name is probably not Nick Tolson, a former air cadet from Shepton Market in Somerset. Nick didn't like that the 501st UK Garrison, a Star Wars fan club, joined in in a parade in his hometown alongside the Army, Navy and Air Force. Nobody else seemed to mind, but Nick did complain that Darth Vader, some Jedi and a few stormtroopers amongst other creatures had got into the parade and had marched alongside the band through his hometown in direct contravention of military procedure because they march right behind the band. Apparently, it would have been alright if they'd marched behind the Air Force at the back of the parade, but considering that, A, this is not a military parade, they were just going through the town on a kind of festival day, and B, they're not real members of the military, so the military parade rules don't actually apply to them. Seriously, Nick, way to miss the big picture. Okay, the last thing I want to mention today is the appalling news that bosses in Scotland's tourism business may have been selling fake photos of the Loch Ness Monster. Fake photos, you say? Indeed. Apparently there's no consensus on whether the Loch Ness Monster actually exists and, if it does or not, whether it should be used to market Scotland. The idea that an ancient, damp beast that doesn't really get on with its neighbours would have a monster represented has caused quite a stir amongst some people. These people would be those that really have nothing else on their minds, so they have time and mental energy to spend debating whether they should talk about the Loch Ness Monster. And if I seem a little bit harsh on those people there, that's just because of what happened. Apparently, one of the guys who does a Loch Ness cruise got a bit annoyed with some other people in the local business who said that the Loch Ness Monster was a myth. He was then set upon by the former boss of the local Loch Ness Centre, who claimed that he had been fobbing off his customers with fake photographs. That really does sound like someone trying to have their cake and eat it to me. How can you not have fake photographs of a mythical creature? I'm not sure that you can get a genuine photograph of something that doesn't exist. And let's face it, most people know that the Loch Ness Monster doesn't actually exist. It's not real. So they're happy to take a genuine fake photograph and be happy with that. Saying, oh, we saw an Essie. Yeah, yeah, of course you did. Yeah, we know we didn't either. But we've got a photograph because it's fun. It's a souvenir. That's all they really want. And anyway, you can't really go around saying, oh, we can't be using the Loch Ness Monster because it's fake when Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. It's a bit late to be arguing about fake creatures. 
But anyway, that's all I've really got time for today. So thank you very much for watching and joining us on the new channel. If you did like this, remember to click the like button, share it with your friends so that they can see what's been going on in just daft news today. And do subscribe for future videos because we'll be back on this channel in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching the revamped Knob Mouse Show and I'll see you on Monday. Letting Stone Age people get around without having to deal with all the monsters and other big massive creatures that were... No, that's not right. Ugh.